Hello. I think we are live. It's so great to have you here, Stefan. I couldn't be more excited to have you on my channel. I feel super privileged. You're one of my all-time lettering heroes. So welcome to iPad Lettering. Um, so Thank you, Karen, so much. <laughs> So I just wanted to give a quick overview of our session today. So anyone who's waiting and, and who's watching will not know what we're going to do. So we're going to do first a, a, just a little intro for people who don't know you, although I'm pretty sure everyone knows you, hopefully. <laughs> but then uh, talk a little bit about, about yourself. But then uh, we're going to go straight into a demo where you're going to show us out your workflow, what you're working, how you're working with Procreate some of your best tips and tricks. And then we are also going to do a, a live project uh, that we've chosen to, to do a live demo. And then of course, we're gonna do questions and answers as well. So anyone who's watching right now, put your questions and answers into the chat, and then we'll we try and answer those at the end of our session. And also before we start, anyone who's watching, let us know where you're watching from. I'm always curious to find out where people are watching us from. Stefan is in, Zurich, Switzerland, and I'm on the other side of the world in Queenstown, New Zealand. And so this, this always means a lot to us to get together from totally different parts of the world and, and be able to connect like this. All right, Stefan, please. Is it my time to start? It's your Say time. Something. It's your time. Perfect. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, my name is Stefan Kunz, if you don't know me already. Um, I'm a hand lettering artist. I've been doing it professionally since 2017, but started in around 2014. 2012 didn't count because I was doing it on my phone with using fonts and I wasn't drawing the letters at the time. And um, what you don't know maybe is that I used to be a banker and I became an artist afterwards um, just because because I thought I didn't have what it takes to become an artist. So I went into banking, Swiss banker, and then moved into arts back again because I realized, no, nope, money isn't it either. And so I still gave it a try, tried it. And luckily, it worked out even better than my banking career, So, which is really awesome. And now we're here. We're here doing a live stream talking about Procreate and how to master Procreate. And so Karen asked me to give you an inside look at kind of my project, my, my Procreate app itself, and talk about one project that I got to work on. And uh, that one is actually a special one, right, Karen? Because we, like, it connects us in some way to each other without even many of you knowing that. You wanna tell us more about that, Karen? Yes, absolutely, yes. So. Um... Maybe we should tell the story about how we met because I think that's interesting as well because, I, because I'm in New Zealand and, and Stefan is in Switzerland and I'm Swiss as well. So normally we actually talk Swiss German, which is, which is funny. So this is kind of weird for us to talk in English, but of course we talk English because otherwise no one would understand. But we actually met in Australia out of all places and Stefan used to live there for a little while and I happened to visit and that's the first time we met and I had my fangirling moment, <laughs> catching up with him and, and spending a really nice afternoon. And, and really the thing that, that impressed me the most, other than your amazing art, is how generous you are, with generous with your time, generous with your advice and, and all the things you taught me in that short session that we had. And yeah, so I'm super grateful for your friendship and for everything you've taught me. And I really hope, you know, you'll be able to, to teach my followers a few things of few few of your secret few of your secrets and a few of the things that you've taught me as well. I'd love that. So before we get into the teaching part, before I show you how to create, let me show you what we're going to create just in a moment. Um, Got to pull up the right stack here with the right files, um, and here we go. So this is what you will be able to learn. So creating these amazing, beautiful ribbons. Um, here's another version of this one. Then we also have here a five, which is also very beautiful. A crazy 
awesome ribbon technique. And so this is what we're gonna, or what I'm going to show you, how I create that, how you can learn to do that too, and uh, we're gonna look at that in a moment. But beforehand, I wanted to start off with one of my favorite projects that I personally got to work on, and that's the Zurich Airport project. Now, when you have a look here at my screen, at what I do, then you'll see that I have a ton of files, a ton of content in here, and now I just have to go back all the way to 2018 about, so that is here. So this project was featured here on a massive parking lot structure, but not only that, it was also featured everywhere around the airport Zurich, which was crazy for me at the time, because one, that, like the place, is one of my dreams, and um, it's also where I always, when I came back to Switzerland or when I landed in Switzerland, I always felt at home. And so that's why it was also something personally very special to me. Now, the project itself posed a huge challenge because one, it had a lot of different um, sizes, ratios, things that I needed to take account of and I had no idea how to figure this out. And when I concepted it, it looked a little bit like this. So this is kind of like how a project starts to look like when I start out, I, I sketch out a couple of things, I put the ideas together, and then here like they're just like notes for the uh, the client to, to understand kind of what I mean and just give him a little overview and look. But from then on, you start to kind of like start to concept, like concept it a little bit more and start to sketch out a little details ask them a few questions, for example here, like this is what I think it will look like on a um, like a vertical format here on a horizontal format and, and kind of like what do I still need to make this all possible and so it kind of like grew on and grew up. Now the one thing though, again when we come back to this one is like how do you make something in Procreate that will be displayed on all sorts of formats, whether it's a huge TV screen, like there's, um, there was a huge long uh, duty-free screen that was going through the entire shop. Then there was um, like billboards outside of the airport. There were like this massive like giga poster, monster poster that went on to the parking lot structure that I showed you just here. Like that's about, I think 10 times 20 meters long. And so I've never had or done anything in that size, especially not printed. And so I had a lot of figuring out to do. And one of the things that I need to figure out is how do I draw it out and make sure that it works. Now what you see here, these are all the project files that I use for this project. And you, as you can tell, like there's a lot of work inside here. But what I figured out is the best way to make sure that you can digitize it or vectorize it afterwards is to draw it out in super high crisp quality that you can then easily vectorize afterwards without actually having to vectorize it or draw it right away. So I'm not somebody who works in vectors, but I'm somebody who loves to draw. And if we look at the information here, the canvas information, one of the interesting things is if I go here to the dimension, you'll see it's 6,000 by 5,000 and it gives me 600 DPI. So it's like, it's super large, it's super crisp and it also gives me about, or it gave me at the time about six layers. So here layers available, 18, um, layers used 12. So apparently at the time, 12 layers were probably enough for this, this, uh, this iPad that I had that I used at the time. Right now I'm on the newer version. And so this is how I built it all up. So all the words you can see in here, those were all drawn afterwards individually on a large scale in different files and different layers. And so afterwards I piece it all back together in Illustrator, put it all back together and that's how I set it all up. So that is one of the craziest projects that I've worked on. It's like from concept, from the initial concept all the way to the final piece, like the printing file, I delivered that and 98 or 99% of all of that was done in Procreate. And it's also a project that I share about in the bonuses of my brand new course. This is so amazing. I absolutely love this. And I got to see it in person as well, which was even better. And it's just really impressive. And I never thought that you would be able to do this in Procreate. But now that you've explained it, it, it makes sense. So you really use the biggest canvas that you can get 
And then, so did you um, did you do a sketch first, and then maybe um, you know brought that into a bigger canvas, and then traced it, or how how did that? How did you do that? That's exactly how I did it. I really took one word at the time. I I kind of like cropped out a picture, then scaled up. Like the quality didn't need to be that high, and so it was super pixelated. But I had to retrace it anyway. Like that was the the process that I do. So I always start with concepts and drafts and then move on to like rough sketches, do final sketches and then finalize the design. And so some stages here work sometimes faster, sometimes longer. And one of the things about also in my appropriate course is like in drawing letters 101, it's basically it's like digital drawing process. That's exactly how I work with my clients, how I I interact with my clients and what stages I work in. So if you follow that principle, you can work with any clients and this process is designed to really streamline the output that you give and how much time you invest. So each process, each step takes about as much time, but it goes from a large number of concepts, ideas and roughs all the way to like sketches, like just a, a little bit, a handful of sketches, like the ones that you really like or that your clients will like. And then you go in and you refine that. And so every project that I work on is exactly this process works the same way. And that helps me to deliver the very best, um, the best content streamlined. So I don't have to work more, but I work efficiently. And also one of the reasons why I do that is because I'm lazy and I like to work fast and easy without too much complication. And so that's kind of like how I got there in the first place. Well, I can actually confirm that I've seen you work really, really fast. And yeah, that's probably one of the things that impresses me the most is how quickly you do things. It's unbelievable how, yeah, how you create these, these amazing artworks in no time. Um, I'm curious, um, what made you decide doing this in Procreate rather than maybe Illustrator or maybe Affinity Designer or any other vector app that you could have used on the iPad? Such a great question, Karen. The reason number one why I use Procreate pretty much for all of my projects is one, it's the best app. It feels perfect. It feels like a natural extension to, to your sketchbook, to, to painting or drawing something on paper. Like drawing on paper with a pencil is probably one of still my favorite things to do um, because I just know it. I've been drawing since I was a kid and, and I've been drawing ever since. And so that kind of like that extension, like I always was on the lookout for something that just felt as natural. And I've been drawing on Photoshop before Procreate, before the iPad came out. And, and so I even shared that story about like how drawing on the iPad or starting out on the iPad wasn't a love story because I didn't see the iPad come out with the Apple Pencil and I was like, that's it. That's my, like, that's my jam, I want that. But what I learned was really to start drawing on Procreate, to invest the time and, and since I had already learned a lot from Photoshop, it was easier to get into it, but still a, a hard learning process. And at the time there weren't any tutorials, there weren't anybody sharing about like, how do you draw on, to, on, on YouTube um, in Procreate. And so I had to do the hard job of doing that. And so I know how it feels to, to move on and how much work you need, how much persistence you need. And, and unfortunately I see a lot of people that, that want to learn that are excited to learn, but that are just stuck like where they are. Like a lot of my students have been writing in, um, in the comments, like, or t DMing me and saying like, Hey, I'm so excited about this course. I've been stuck in Procreate at the same place for over like a year. I've had Procreate for two years or something, and I haven't made any progress. And so now I want to invest in myself and really get that going. So that's what I love. And so that's something that I have learned to do. And now the reason why I use Procreate again is because it felt so natural and illustrator doesn't feel natural or as natural at all um like affinity design like it's a great app doesn't feel as natural and so just the how procreate how savage interactive and for all of you who don't know savage is actually based in tasmania and australia so not that far away from from karen but what i loved about this app so much is it feels like an app, a drawing app should feel like. It's so natural, it's so fast, it's so quick, and with all the improvements they made over the years, it just got better and better. And the craziest thing is, I only spend like $10 once, and I still spend like 50 bucks a month for Adobe, and so 
like I cannot even comprehend that relationship, like how I'm able or how I'm willing to pay so much, but the app that I'm actually using 90% of the time is this one. And that's why drawing everything in that app, drawing for this project was so natural. And I never even considered using a different app. I was instantly like, I will draw this on this app because I feel comfortable drawing. Uh, in this app and so that's kind of like the feeling that I want to give other people um, when they start out a project or anything to really be comfortable and confident in that. Amazing and and I think that's really important for everyone to hear is that you don't need all these fancy other apps yeah Tinder, or Procreate and you, you can do most of it it's just unbelievable and um, yeah don't be discouraged um, if you don't want to you know spend more money on other apps Procreate is pretty much all I use as well. I do use uh, Illustrator sometimes, but I spend 99% of my time in Procreate as well. Now, one of the things um, I've seen on your iPad is all your files. So let's have a look again. I want to see how you organize your files, just to see, like some other people might be interested as well. What, what, is, your, what is your strategy? How, how, do you, how do you organize your files? All right, so... We've talked about this beforehand, and this is something that I'm a little bit ashamed of. And over the years, I've learned this is messy. This is really something that Procreate doesn't do well, but there are workarounds and how you can fix that if you start early. So you've started that early, and I saw that you sort your files by months. And so every month is like all the files that you create in a specific month are in there. Now, what I do is usually I have two different things. So let me see. For example, here um, I have like folders and those are like typo X photo folders. This is something that I share in the course. And so this is why there's a folder full of these different ones. But what you will often see is like two similar ones or even exactly the same. Now, here's for example, one of the very latest projects that I worked on. I haven't even shared this yet, but this is a um, mosaic piece that I started creating. And so here is the progress and I've created copies every time I've like restarted or if I decided to change something like here, this one is almost finished. Um, and, and you can see like there might be something changing. And then here I decide like, you know what? I want to go a totally different route. And so this is pretty much the end result. I'm still tweaking here some details, but everything around, like you can see, this is different. Now, the reason why I do this is because one, often I create my project in a large canvas, like the largest possible, and it only gives me a certain amount of layers. Now, if I go into this final piece here and I go into my canvas information and go to layers, you can see layers use 42 and maximum layers 48. Now, the reason is why now I'm down to 42 is because I've kind of like deleted some layers that I wasn't using and that I knew I weren't using anymore. Now, 48, you feel like you don't hit that often and I usually like work well between 20 layers. That's like my optimum. Um, but 48 layers is like, that's a lot and that's only th thanks to the new iPad. But that's why like I kind of work the way I work. Um, is so I do not want to work destructively. So I create a lot of different files and options. And then I also create like here, this is, um, this was a Christmas at Central. Here you can see like there's also different versions of the same like like different uh, names like different options um like different ornaments here like with like all like cross sketched and so on and so you can see like there are different versions different projects and grouped together so i definitely don't have a great filing system all of my projects are called untitled artwork which when you export that it's really terrible because you do not find anything and plus makes it so much harder to back up. Like for example, here you would see, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so usually I would take all of these, like these are all similar. I want to keep them all into one project or one stack. And now they're all in here so I can find that later on when I'm in here. And, and so they're all like different pieces. Like here, this is the man who walked uh, around the world. And so there are different versions. Um, if I even take here, like that's what I love about Procreate. You can go in and you can then tap on video time-lapse replay. And now you can see like here, all the different versions. Like that was one version that I created. There was a second version, a uh, third version. Oh yeah, that was the one that I then created. And then here's a fourth version. 
And so you see, that's how it kind of like come up with all the different sketches. Then I refined it and then tried out like different backgrounds on top just to see which one like would go better. Like here, it's more of a, a beautiful sunset vibe look. And then here, this the yellow one I think was the winner uh, that got the job done. And so that's kind of like how I organize my things. And here's the thing in my, in my course, I, I talk about like the right setup and the right setup is something that is super important. Like when you start working, you don't want to lose time on looking for projects. You don't want to lose time, like searching for a file that you have lost somewhere. Um, but you want to be able to work fast and efficient. And so having the right setup, like I share all the lessons that I have learned by, by hardship, by, by going through things that weren't so great, like losing files and also by having to search for a file like over and over for like five minutes at least. And so that's something that has taken me a lot of time and that I've struggled with. And so in the right setup, I share about like what you shouldn't do or how you shouldn't do it the way I did. And I actually even share about Karen's technique and how she manages all of the things because she's taught me well, she's doing it really well. And she is very, um, like I look up to her, how she like keeps everything organized and keeps everything tidy and clean because I'm not that way. And, and since I've seen how much it helps her, that's why I give that tip or I share that with other people and in my course. Maybe now that you've mentioned it, I might share my iPad as well so I can show everyone what that means. It's actually not, I, what Stefan said, it's a little bit exaggerated, but this is what my iPad looks like. And so the way I organize my files is actually just by month. So it might seem a little bit more organized, but then I've been using Procreate for six years. So I have quite a few folders as well, but this is how my brain works. And, and I think chronological is, is just makes the most sense. And then, you know, April we're now and then March and so on. So that's what I do. Some of the, some of the stacks actually have different things. Like I've got one for all my animations. This is where I keep all the animations, mostly for uh, YouTube videos that I make. And then I have some watercolors and some doodles, but yes, mostly, mostly it's organized by months and it's worked quite well for me. And then sometimes I don't know exactly where I've um, got a file. And then what I do sometimes is go back on Instagram because a lot of my work is on Instagram and I can see the date it was posted and then usually I find it again on the iPad. But now uh, you also talked about losing files or, or backups or how, how do you make sure you're not going to lose any of your work? That is such a great question because one of the worst things that you can imagine happening is that you kind of like your device just dies down and not that we planned this or anything, but since yesterday, my phone keeps crashing. So somehow like it turns on for 20, 20 seconds. And as soon as I like unlock it, 20 seconds later, it just crashes down and I don't know what to do with it. Um, and, and probably all the files on this phone right now are gone. Now, luckily, there's a backup that happens every night when I go to sleep, when I plug it in, um, like it happens automatically in the background. And so that's great. Now, you usually do not expect these things to happen, but it can and can at any time. And so we're not here to scare you. We're just here to try to protect you. And it's kind of like an insurance policy. If you do that, if you have an insurance policy, then you're pretty much safer. Like driving on the road without an insurance is dangerous. Um, it's, it's as dangerous as just driving, but without an insurance, you probably might lose a lot of money if something happens. And we never want that to happen. But in case that happens, here's how I believe you can protect yourself really well. So there are different ways. Number one is to create an iCloud backup. So I have an iCloud membership subscription. And, and what that does is usually backs up everything automatically. It did so until a while ago and Karen and I just, I talked to her and she said like, I have the same problem. It doesn't work anymore. So there's a second, second scenario. Two is to actually plug your iPad in and back it up directly to your computer. That's the very safest option and also the fastest option that you can have because I, when I set up my brand new iPad, like I got this iPad like about, I don't know, uh, half a year ago. And what happened is that it took like three days to kind of like synchronize all from the cloud. And like I have super fast internet. It just took so long and I kept it plugged in and I didn't know what would happen. Um, so that is something that can happen. <coughs> Sorry. 
So, yeah, I, I just want to say uh, the same happened, the exact same happened to me as well yeah. when I tried to back up my previous iPad to this new one. I let it go for five days and it never completed the backup on i uh, on iCloud. So I ended up plugging it into my iMac. And even then it took probably 15 hours to do a backup, but still it it, mm. it completed the backup and then I was able to restore as well. So that's exactly it. So iCloud backup is awesome. You don't have to think about it. Usually you just have to plug in your, your, your iPad at the evening, but then also make sure that you always check for this mark here. So if you go into settings and you check out here, you'll see like for me, iPad not backed up. And so every time like I can turn that on and off, it doesn't work. But like if you see that, that's a sign that should give you signals to stop what you're doing, figure out a way to back it up. And so that's something that you need to make sure that it works. The second thing, like I shared, plug in to a computer. And the problem with that is usually like for me, 500 gigabytes is a massive amount of data that I don't have on my computer. Like my computer itself has 500 gigabytes. So I need a different computer or a computer with a larger drive to plug it in because it just doesn't work other way. So that is something that you need to take account for. Even when I'm buying now a computer, I need to take account for like, oh, you know what? I probably need more storage on my computer just because of the iPad. Luckily, I have an old Windows PC that has a terabyte of, of hard drive that I don't use except for plugging it in. So that's a luxury that probably not many of you have, but maybe you have an old computer that you're not using that has still a big hard drive. That could be something useful. Then the next thing that you can do is also back up your files individually and manually. That is something that I explain also in the course is what you should do or what you can do is you have a OneDrive, Google Drive or iCloud Drive and you start to drag and drop all your files like every at the end when the project is finished, when you're done with the project, drag it over. Now, one thing that you need to take in or take account of is that once you do that, you also like you only have a copy. This copy isn't synced with the actual file that is in Procreate. So as soon as you open Procreate file and it opens up and you start drawing it again, this other one stays where you copied it from. So when you import that back in, then you can reuse it. And so that's kind of like the issue that you have when you just manually drag it over if, if you reopen that. So the best way to not have that happen again is to actually delete the file afterwards and only delete files that you're sure that are safely copied because once you delete something in Procreate, there isn't a trash folder that you can get it back out again. You have like you've lost it all. And so that's why I'm very cautious with that part. And that's why I'm very cautious about moving files around. But again, that's where a lot of problems can occur. And that's not something that a lot of people like to talk about, but it's something super important. So if we just recap quickly what we looked at, one, iCloud backup, that is the easiest. You don't have to think about it if it works. Two is plug it in to your computer, make sure that you have an actual backup and three, manually back your files up by dragging them into your Google Drive, iCloud Drive, whatever drive, Dropbox that you have, um, you can move them around and so on. And so that's kind of like where I'm leaving it. And then of course, if you have your name, like your files all named properly, then it's gonna be easier to find them later on as well. But I think Karen and I both are untitled artwork person that have <laughs> like just 5,000 files of one. Yeah, exactly. That's what I do as well. But maybe um, just to add on to my strategy with the folders, uh, with the monthly stacks, so what I do is every time I create a new stack for a month, that kind of triggers me to back up the previous month. And then because I'm starting a, okay. a new stack for the new month, I, I won't actually go back to the previous file. So if I want to work on a file again, I will copy it and then move it into the new folder. So I have two of them, but then I have two different versions and then the, the older one is backed up. That's just a little strategy that you might find helpful. Very and, good. And yeah, just, and, and if you don't have that trigger that Karen has, Put it in your calendar like yeah it's something so easy that we overlook like i'm sorry to say i don't do that but also because <laughs> i kind of like gave up on on the hope that i can do that or can fix it but put it in your calendar like right now get your phone out write down in your calendar at the end of the week back up the files that you've created or at the end of the month like set a certain date when you can do that 
and you'll be thankful that you did and and that you can do that properly cool now this is really this is this is super helpful and i think you know this is probably the two swiss people in us that we always worry about these things but i think they've they've saved us a few times but now shall we do some drawing let's do some drawing so here i'm just going to get this out again um what we're creating so that you have a great example of what we're going to do now this is a beautiful ribbon part we're not going to concentrate on the background we're not going to concentrate on putting that inside like really intertwining that's another part but let's look at how we can create a ribbon now how to create a ribbon like in a word like there's an eight step process that i teach on how to get from a just a script lettering version like if i would create a u like this or like a U, a Y, like that, how to transform this into a beautiful looking ribbon and to really get that out. Like that's something that I teach. Now, that's not what I'm gonna be concentrating on right now. I'm gonna be showing you how I transform this into a ribbon. And so this is why I'm gonna go in here and let's do a um, K for Karen. Um, so here, like I would draw out like a K just like this. And then I would probably have to figure out like what parts are up, what parts are down and behind and where kind of like the folds happen. So here, this is kind of like where the fold would happen. And then here again, like that. Here, there would be a loop. And then here, it would probably go up, maybe up around. Does that look cool? Oh my God, this is so cool. Mind blown already. <laughs> so very simple now i know this this part is a little bit tricky already like a lot of people struggle just with this part but again in the course i'm sharing everything how to go from from like a sketch and not this way i'm explaining you like an easy way to get there so you can understand like even give you a cheat sheet on like the crosses like how to cross everything so that is kind of like a cool way to do that now I'm going to reduce the opacity here on this one because I don't want to see it. That is just my sketch that will help me later on to draw it out. Now I'm going to create the ribbon part. So for that, what I'm going to do, and this is a super easy trick. I'm actually going to turn this background here into a different color. Like let's put that into a red um, and let's brighten that up here again, just a tiny little bit. And let's create some white, black and white stripes. So for that, I'm using the selection tool and the rectangle. I haven't used that tool much, but one thing that is great, you can just do that, like select this area, but then do color fill. Now that's an easy way to create a color. And now I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna invert that. So I've duplicated, inverted, and then now I can move it onto the side. And while I move it onto the side, I'm gonna turn on snapping. So in snapping, turn on magnetic, and now you can easily move that just a tiny bit to the side until you see the white come back out and so if i want to zoom in this is also something that is really cool you can nudge by just a few taps here boom perfectly together and so now i have two stripes now i want to create more stripes so here let's put these together merge those down and let's create a duplicate so now i can just move that around and boom like zoom in again just put that close like that. Sounds perfect. Looks perfect. Merge down and I can do that. Either I do it for three times or just a less time like here. I'm actually going to try to duplicate that one more time. And I'm going to create like here one. And one last one that I'm going to reverse. So I'm going to move this out here, but I'm going to flip that horizontally. So I have a four stripe line like this and perfect so now i have four individual like different um like stripes and if i put them all together like this i pinch and i zoom and um, so pinching together helps me to put that all together in just one file now one thing now that i can do easily is i can duplicate this so this is my going to be my original here this one i'm gonna leave that up I'm not going to touch that. The one that I'm always going to touch and I'm going to start off with is this one. So first up, I'm going to put that in position and here I'm going to turn off the magnetic again and I'm going to like distort it, transform it however I need to. 
and I'm going to place it. So here we have this large uh, stem here from the K and I'm going to put it back here into the position, thickness, breadth, like length that it should be about like this here. And once I have that locked into position, I'm going to start using the warp function. So in your transform tool, you have freeform, uniform, distort and warp. And if I go into warp, now it starts to be like I can move all these elements. If you go to advanced mesh, so here, you get all these nods everywhere. So there's about 60 nods on all ends. And now I can easily pull these along and with precision, like really move them around. This part here takes a lot of time. The reason why is because I want to place them perfectly and I want to create these transitions really well. So that takes kind of like a lot of pulling, a lot of doing here. And so that's kind of like where you will spend the most time just trying to get that perfect. And here, this is what I'm trying to do. It's kind of like get that line in the background and here as well, kind of have these elements to cross. And so what I want to do is kind of like have this continuation of the line going background on the background here. And so I can see if I zoom in close, I can see some parts that are great, some parts that are not so great. And I'm just going to try to get these all in their best position. So here, this line would be kind of the continuation. So if I actually pull this a little bit like that, that will look great. And so that's one side done. And now I can decide like, do I want to, whoops, this was the wrong one. I kind of want to take this one here and maybe I want to actually go the opposite way on this other side. So let's say here like this. So it kind of like flows like that at the end. And so there are so many options that you can do. And as soon as you're happy with where you've placed it all, you can just tap on the transform, like on the cursor tool here and then drag it, drop it. So that is part one. Now we're going to add like a second part here. So let's go in, duplicate the original one, the one that wasn't transformed. And I'm going to move that. I'm going to keep it in the background because actually here, like free transform, place it back here and transform this to where I need it like that. That looks pretty great to me. And so again, warp, advanced mesh. And then here, I'm going to pull all of these into this perfect line, creating here beautiful ribbon flowing elements. And so that is something, whoops, if you move the wrong, if you don't move the knot, it can move everything at the same time. And the cool thing now, since here, this is going into the back, I can really just, even though still place it into the back. And all I want here is to get this part, this part here really well, like that. Actually even higher up like this here. And then after a while you get the hang of it. You kind of know how to move all these elements and then get them the way you want them to and really just move correctly. And so that is kind of like the thing that always takes a lot of time just to get it right. In my videos, I usually do it faster. Like I kind of skip on things. And so let's just have a look. So first up we have this here and that looks already really great. And the way you can improve that is by adding shadows and highlights. That's kind of how you really add depth to your design and really make it special. And that is easily done by adding a clipping mask. So on top here on this one, I'm going to add a clipping mask. So create a new layer. And then on this layer, I tap clipping mask. So this will only project onto that specific layer. So you will only see it on these visible pixels here. And I can take now here, dark color, a soft brush, and then with a like lighter element here, I can then start to draw in and now you can see how beautiful this is. And if you don't believe me, like, well, what does a clipping mask really do? Like if I turn this clipping mask off, you can see all this black like spreads all around. I turn this back on and it's only visible on this layer. And then finally to add some highlights even on top here. So do a new layer clipping mask on top of the 
long uh, ribbon and then use some white and then just like reduce here and then draw it on here. And so you can see how like lights and shadows can really affect how your ribbon look. And at the bottom, I can even add some more shadows just here. And so that is kind of like how you can make a beautiful ribbon look just amazing. And so just to complete that, let's finish this up. We have two more to go. So here, I'm going to take this back up, turn it on, freeform, move it into position. And now you suddenly start to get the hang of it. And so that's when it starts to make a lot of fun creating something really awesome. And that's what I want you to feel whenever you're creating something is to enjoy the process because it's just so amazing, so much pleasant to create something that you're enjoying. And what better way than you can like create like the first letter of somebody, fr some friends, some birthday card. You could do like so many things that you can do when you're creating something that you like and that you enjoy. And so that is here the K. So now I kind of want to get this here up here and I want to also make sure that it loops around. Again, pull the wrong lever here, getting those lines right. And now I want to move this one on top, actually not on top here, but really on top of everything. So getting this all up here turning off clipping mask. Here we go. And now just the last one, duplicating, putting that one into position, turning it on. So there's a clipping mask again, turned on and then freeform. See, as soon as I start to move faster, I make like small, tiny mistakes. Um, not bad ones, but just small and tiny that are just cost me a little bit more time. And now here again, I can also use this here to kind of like put it already into a better position. And now with the warp function, advanced mesh, get it all positioned right. And that's here where I want to connect those two. That's kind of going to be a little bit more tricky um, just because I have no idea if I can do that from here, or if I need to add another piece. And so that's going to be something to figure out right now as we do this. I think it's possible. I think there's an easy way, easier way to do that, but I think it's possible. So if I move this in here, yeah, that looks fine. And now just trying to get that together. You see me fully concentrated in here. This is, this is now just too large. So I'm just going to pull these down here a tiny little bit more. Like that. And I'm going to hit that button and let's take away the sketch. And with some shadows again and highlights here. I'll add a clipping mask on top of the other one. I'll add a clipping mask as well. And then now I can just start coloring in. So here, all the bottom is going to be a little bit darker. And then especially here on top, that's where it's going to loop. It's also going to be darker. And then just here on the cross, that is where you want to add some, some shadows. And then finally, some highlights on top like this. Whoops, that is a little bit too much. Someone wanted to know, how do you know where to place the shadows? How do you know where to paint white and where to paint black? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, so usually I imagine myself that really well into like, how should it look like? Um, how, like, where, where does it cross? And where does the light source come from? So here in this case, I imagine myself, let's sketch that out quickly. It's just so you can see that. So imagine this part here. So this is kind of like what is happening from a side point perspective. 
Now, if the light comes from the top, like that's kind of like where this, the light part hits. So this is why this here is all in white. Now, here at the bottom, I imagine this going like this. So this is kind of like where the light hits, but here from this point on, it somehow misses that. And so here, this is all shadow. And so that is why this part from here on is a little bit shaded. So in my mind, when you work this fast, you kind of imagine like, oh, this is how this happens. Or if there's something on top of that, like, of course, this part here will drop some shadows. And this is why on this part here, on this crossing, there are some shadows that will come in. And so that's how I easily quickly do it. Like it's not a lot of knowledge to it, but here the same thing happens. Like it's just behind, like something is on top of it. Like this covers the back part. And so this is why automatically these parts gonna be shaded in. And then I usually let my intuition guide me, try to figure out what works well, what doesn't, and how to put that all together. And so this here, like here, for example, on this one, on the background, I think there should be also some shadows. So I'm going on here, taking a softer brush again, and then just like that, draw something in. And so that you kind of can feel like it looks realistic and it, it appears to be more realistic than it was before. And so the only thing here is really the top part that I feel here should somehow have like some light or highlights. And then sometimes what I like to play around is also here with the like screen, um, like add, like see, like how does the blending modes affect my design? And so you can play around with that, create something really awesome, put it all together. And one bonus tip, one bonus trick is if you want to change out the colors, like if you're not happy with black and white, like I found out that you can actually easily um, say, you know what, I want to add some orange to it. Now what I would do is to create add here and then here you can just color in all of this in orange. If you want to color in the white parts, what you could do is you can add a second version here, tap on multiply and then say, you know what, if I start, am I on the right one? Yeah, somehow. Oh, you know what? This way. So now it's kind of like crosses over. Um, what what else could you do? You could actually, could you do this? I'm not sure. Oh, I think I just lost my train of thought. But how you can definitely color in the bright parts is by adding just the color layer, like a other clipping mask, and then turn that one to add, and then that creates your easily colored in part. And so that is how I created these different ribbon parts and here how I create like this colorful parts to put together. This is amazing. Wow. And now you can see why I'm saying you are so fast. I could have done this maybe, but it would have taken me four hours probably to do the same thing. I'm going to try it. Maybe not tonight, but you try. <laughs> this is try. so cool. This is unbelievable. My, my, name has never looked any better i'm super impressed very cool very cool all right so now um there are a few questions i think the first thing you want to talk about is your course you've mentioned it a few times and you've got a brand new course where can people find that i got an awesome new course and i'd love to share about it if i can for a minute um so Let's just jump in. So how does the Ultimate Procreate course help you? So first up, we've put together a whole curriculum to help you learn awesome things. So the best thing to do is to like, you can sit down, you can learn at your own pace and sit down in a coffee shop, sit down in your favorite restaurant, like a seat in your house uh, on, a, on a sofa and you can start just learn. What you'll learn is you'll learn my digital design process and how I work in Procreate and how I create things like from all the way from sketching to finalizing your designs to adding awesome effects, kind of like 3D ribbons, um, textures and all of that and able to share beautiful work that you want to share and that will also get you those likes, the client work, all of that. And so again, like I said, 
all of the material, everything that you that we've created is available uh, all year round, like lifetime access, 24 seven. You can watch all the videos whenever you want at the speed that you want. You can watch them all through an entire week. Um, if you can even in, in an entire day, like it's, it would be a movie marathon, like 15 plus hours of content that we've recorded and that you can learn. But learning alone is not the only thing to, that you need to do. You need to apply that learning. So the second part of our course is creating. So we've put together all a lot of great content and exercises to help you create and to put everything you learn, like how to use colors, how to create color palettes and so on, to put that into practice and really apply the learning into your work. And so that's why all of our students have created amazing pieces over the past Procreate bootcamps. And we've really tested out the materials and we've seen the amazing work that comes out from the people that really give it the best shot. They create so stunning work, you're gonna be speechless. And once you've applied that, so you've learned everything, you've applied that, and now it comes back down to feedback. So feedback is an essential part of the learning process. And without feedback, you're just gonna maybe do a lot of things with mistakes. And sometimes also you might move on in a direction you don't want to. And we wanna help you. Not only will our students help you, but what we offer, uh, what my team and I offer um, is student critique calls. So one of our things that we've done is we have a monthly student critique call where you can hand in your designs for me to review and I will be personally reviewing them and giving you feedback in that call. Maybe I won't be able to do all of them, but usually depending on the number and size, I get to share about that. And so that's something really, really cool that I'm excited about because one, it gives me an opportunity to talk to you directly in person and also kind of like have that personal interaction. But if you cannot send that in, um, or if you cannot be live with us, you can just send it in and you can rewatch it later on and you get also access to all of our previous archived sessions where you can learn a lot about like last week or last month we talked about color theory, which was a very interesting topic. The month before we talked about um, like where to place your decorative elements in your design to really make your lettering stand out. And so all of these three things, learning, creating, and feedback have helped some of our students to create absolutely stunning work. And here's an example. So this was um, Christine. Christine started off like first assignment is to see like a starting point where you start off. And after only four modules, she created this amazing piece. And that's been so good. And I know that a lot of you might be thinking like, hey, maybe lettering is not for me. Um, is like, will I only learn lettering? Well, no, like we have here, uh, Ali Burke, she created a entire children's book with what she learned in the course. And she has really uh, excelled at doing so. And so here's a little testimonial that she shared, like without Stefan's Procreate course, I certainly would have not learned all the ins and outs of such a complex and robust app. His instruction paired with live critiques and peer feedback was invaluable. And I've used my new knowledge to create art for my business and even a children's book for my son. So you can see all your lettering, all your designs, everything that you learn in this course can be applied in so many awesome different ways. And so that's why I believe that this course is going to be amazing. It's transformative. We've seen that transformation in our students. Like Christine is just one example. I have many more examples. It's the one that I love to share the most because it's just mind blowing how far you can get. And so that's why I'm so excited. And we've just launched on Friday and already so many people have started. We've already got over 200 people that have started um, sending in their, um, their first assignment. And so that's just absolutely insane. This is super cool and I'm very excited as well. And if you want to find out more, there's a link in the description of this video if you wanted to check it out. So now there's some more questions and I've collected on Instagram and then also um, people have emailed me directly. And one of the questions was if someone has already signed up for one of your previous courses, how do they know what's included in the new course versus the old one? They already subscribed maybe. Um, what, what's the same and what's different in the different courses that you're offering? That is such a great question. So the all of our courses are complementing each other perfectly. Like you got to imagine like strawberry and chocolate complement each other. It's a perfect blend. That's kind of like how we build our courses. I do not build courses that repeat itself. So the ultimate lettering course 
is perfect for lettering. The Ultimate Procreate online course is perfect for learning Procreate. That's what we focus on in the Procreate course is really how to create things inside of Procreate, use the Procreate features and tools to create awesome work. You can apply then anything you want and you can put your imagination onto the tablet, into the digital drawing space and create amazing things. Then we have a 3D bootcamp, which focuses on really taking your designs, your lettering to the next level, really drawing perspective or perspective drawing in a very new format. We have a new course coming out that's starting April, but this one is really close to just only our, our existing students. It's called the Script Lettering Bootcamp, and it's gonna be super exciting to start with that one. Um, so I can't wait to do that, it starts April 19th. And the Ultimate Procreate course is really different from all of our other courses and complement each other well. So that's why when you purchase the Ultimate Procreate course, one of the things that you can do that we offer is an order bump. And the order bump allows you to get the Ultimate Lettering course for half price. So that means that when you buy the Ultimate Procreate course, you can get the other one and together it's like a perfect blend and it's an awesome bundle. So you learn lettering on one side, like building letters, drawing letters and composition. And then on the other hand, you'll learn to do that in Procreate. And then I've had the question a lot, like, which one do I start first with? Like, should I start with the lettering first? Should I start with Procreate? And it's like, it doesn't really matter. If you start with Procreate, you'll be able to take the ultimate lettering uh, course and, and do it on the iPad. If you start with the ultimate lettering, then your Procreate course will be even so much better because you already have like lettering fundamentals. You can do them both at the same time. Like it doesn't really matter. You can do all at the same time or all individually. And the best part, it's all online. It's all self-paced. So you can do it fast. You can do one module here, one module there. You can play around however you like. Amazing, thank you so much. And then um, I've also had a question. Advice for someone who is completely new to digital art and has no art background to begin with. Any tips on where to start? The easiest way to start is to start now. It doesn't really matter where you are at. Um, one of the very first exercises or like one of the first exercises you're going to do is to try out the Procreate brushes. Sounds like a stupid uh, like exercise, like, like when do I really have time to play around with brushes? Like I've seen the comments and I was actually surprised at how people, how much they love this exercise because it's actually just very relaxing. You pick up a brush, you try them all out one by one and you create a piece. It doesn't have to mean anything. It's just playful and beautiful. And so that is something that I love and I have seen them do. And it's just so like, it's so interesting. It's creating an art piece that you would have probably never start with. And so that is, gives you like a first feeling of doing something digitally and whether you've done something or not, doesn't really matter. And the best part about it is if you start with the Procreate course, you are going to learn all of these different things like creating something in 3D, drawing out letters, creating like ribbon lettering, just what we did like now. Like I will give you something first to do and then you can copy it, but then you can also create a version of that you create yourself. So there's so many awesome things that you can do and can play around with, which are really, really, really cool. Very cool. Thank you. And then this is a good question. I get this asked a lot as well, actually. Um, how did you get started with lettering and with the iPad? Do you prefer digital or traditional lettering? Wow, that is that is a packed question. <laughs> the, uh, the quick answer is really I've started digitally. I started digitally because I, I always loved the digital feeling. Um, so I before I got into lettering, I created like um, posts like type posts with my phone and I use an app called over to do that. And so I shared that. And at some point I realized, you know what? I cannot really like move beyond those 10 fonts. I've tried everything I possibly can. And now it's time to, to branch out. And so the only way I knew how was to start drawing by hand. And so at the time I didn't have a tablet, digital device or anything. So I drew it by hand on the, on paper, and then I used some different apps to get it back onto my phone, onto the, the, the photo, the piece that I was creating. 
After a while, I just switch on to drawing something on paper and I loved using different mediums. So I love the chalk wall, so right behind the camera, um, I have a huge three by five meter huge chalk wall piece. I even have a chalkboard here on the side that I can use. I have whiteboards, I have paper, I have tons of different materials that I love to use. I even love drawing on windows, on walls, like murals. Um, like all of this different, using different methods and tools is something that I love to do. But one thing that you cannot forget is I'm lazy. I'm super lazy and this laziness lends itself well that having an iPad that you can carry around everywhere you go, like I love this flexibility. So this is why the iPad is something that I kind of like carry all the time with me everywhere I go. And it's, it's so handy. And I only got to know how handy it was when I bought it for the very first time. Beforehand, I used a Vacuum Cintiq tablet and you might not know that about that, but like that's something the professional in the industry used to use. I said used to use because back then, like that was the standard. And when Apple introduced their iPad, I felt like, well, this is for the masses. This is not professional. And that's kind of like my story, like how I kind of was hold back, um, held back against buying an iPad because I thought like anybody can buy an iPad, but a tablet like a vacuum, like that's for professionals. And the thing was that I had to plug in my iP like my Vacuum Cintiq tablet into my computer through HDMI plus plug it into an outlet into um, into like wherever I went. And so I never were really that flexible. The first thing that I always used to do is to look down under the table if there were any plugs or power outlets. And I highly recommend you not doing that because if it's summer and you look down, like the very first thing is when you enter a coffee shop and you look under the tables, like I got thrown out because somebody was thinking that I was looking under people's skirts and um, that wasn't what I was doing, but that's what it felt like. And so that was a problem. And this is why you shouldn't do that. And so having the iPad, having to be able to carry that everywhere around, being able to work professionally with that, like, like my biggest project that I've worked on, like some 100K projects that I've worked on, all done on the iPad. This is where it all worked out and started. And so this is how and why I'm kind of like most comfortable with. And plus, I recently shared this post on Instagram is like, um, I'm sorry I fooled you guys or um, I how I faked it all these years. Like some chalk walls I never even created. I actually just put that in. And this is one part of the course is like creating awesome mockups. And so this is something, how you present your work is so important. And the iPad is an essential way on how I present my work, creating murals that I've never created, putting it on billboards that I've never done, but showing that to clients, making them see how it could look like in the real world helps them to imagine that so much better because not everybody has a great imagination and that is a tool that helps you to do that really, really well. And so understanding how all of these features work, that's perfect. That is so cool. Yeah, and, and I'm probably in a similar situation. I only started when it's actually not so much the iPad, but it's this this little little white gadget here, the Apple Pencil. This is my all time favorite gadget, and I really thought this would this makes all the difference. And and that's how I started as well. So anyone listening, thinking they have to maybe start in the traditional way, you've just heard from Stefan and myself that we 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 started on the iPad. Well, maybe Stefan on, on the computer, but definitely in the digital world. And so it's not necessary to, to practice on pen and paper if you don't want to. But on the other hand, if you, if you like it, then there's definitely nothing wrong. As you see behind me, I've got quite a few pens here and I've got a pen collection and a pencil collection. I still love stationery. So there's nothing wrong with doing that, of course, either. But yeah, having the iPad, being able to carry it around wherever you go, I love working on an airplane, for example. That's probably my favorite place to do lead training because no one disturbs me. I've got nothing else to do. And um, so it's just super handy to have it with me at all times. I couldn't agree more. I've drawn some of my best work on an airplane. And, and whenever like you have a break, you're somewhere, you just pack it out, you get it out, you draw something like, I gotta say, this iPad has been my best investment together with Procreate. And just giving it a try was the best thing that I could have done. And now the only thing that's holding a lot of people back is knowing how to use it and making the most out of it. And once you get over that like hump, 
I think it gets so much easier. You feel so much more confident. And when you feel confident, you create more, you create better. And you're not like, oh, I, I don't know, I feel so jittery or I don't know how to do that or where the, all these things are, you're overwhelmed. No, you gotta feel confident when you create because that's kind of like a, pa like a pen and paper. There's nothing very overwhelming about that. It's just like there's an empty space that you have to fill out, but you can start right away. And so all these tools, like you said, the Apple Pencil with the iPad paired together, like it's a beautiful mix and beautiful combination. Yeah, and that's why I love what you say. You say create something today, even if it sucks. I love that so much. And every time you post that on Instagram, it's a little reminder to just create something. Just just practice, right? And and that's how you get better. That's exactly true. Yes. Very good. All right. I think we've taken up enough of your time, but thank you so much for coming on here. It was amazing to have you and show us your insane skills. I'm, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm going to try this right now. And I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that uh, people who watched will, will do the same thing. Thank you so much, Stefan. And um, yes, uh, again, the link for the course is in the description below. If you have more questions, Stefan, what's the best time, to, uh, the best um, way to contact you? Where can people find you if they have more questions for you? So the easiest way we've made it possible is through Instagram directly, DM me the word pro and I'll send you information. If you have like specific information or questions, like write pro and then ask your question. That's the best way. Like we're right now checking our DMs regularly every couple of hours, except when we sleep. And um, we always want to get back to you. We want to help you figure out if this is something for you. If you're not even sure, like if you feel like, hey, I know Procreate quite well, is this course still for me? Then send us your works, show us what you got. And we'd love to take a look. Like we want to help you make sure that it's a great investment. Um, what we hate is taking people's money for something they do not want. Like there's no reason for that. I hate that. I've been locked into those contracts and we don't want that. So we want to make sure that you get something that you're proud of. And one of my, like one of the feedbacks that I just recently got, let me just read that out. Um, somebody texted me that um, and said, such great course or such good info, Stefan. I've done many courses that have a fraction of what you've included. Uh, so grateful. So you can see like just the very first part of the course, like Procreate 101 is like two hours long where I go through everything that Procreate has. I haven't seen a YouTube video out there that does that. And there's maybe a reason it's because it takes so much time. But once you do, once you go through all what like adjustments do, like all the, the tools in, in the transform feature, like you saw, like I use advanced mesh and use the warp tool. Now, did you already know about that or not? I don't know, but here I show you kind of like where everything is, what every part does and how you can use them and how you can get like the fast tricks, tips and ticks. And so that's a great way. And so if you have any questions, always feel free to ask and reach out. We'd love to help you. Amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to the audience for watching. It was awesome. I have had an absolute blast. Thank you so much, Stefan, for coming on my channel and showing us all your skills. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And guys, if you're still watching, drop a like for Karen to put that a thumbs up on that video that also helps her just her channel. And how crazy is that you you surpassed me on the views and and the, the followers subscribers. So you got a great audience right here. I'm so thankful for that. I'm grateful to my audience. My audience is the best. I'm, I'm super grateful. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye.